<clears throat> Hello. Um, now we'll talk uh, today again is the 17th of July 2023 and this is the day, I mean the 17th of July when this great Ottoman architect Mimar Sinan died. He lived a long life as you can see he almost reached uh, the age of 100. Let's, uh, let's read a little bit about him. Koka Mimar Sinan Aga, Sinan Aga the Grand Architect. Now the word grand I only found one more time in the history of architecture, most surely, or I imagine other, others were associated with this word grand, but Fidon Books published a giant book on Le Corbusier called Le Corbusier Le Grand, and it has 10 kilograms in weight, and it's, it's huge. Anyway, Sinan Aga, the grand architect, Sinan Aga, the grand architect, in modern Turkish, Mimar Sinan pronounced, I guess, Mimar Sinan, Sinan the architect. Sinan the architect, born in 1488 or 1490 and died in 1588, July 17th, was the chief Ottoman architect. Mimar, that's what it means, Mimar. Mimar Sinan, and civil engineer for Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, Selim II, and Murad III. Three sultans, as if one was not enough. He was responsible for the construction of more than 300 major structures and other more modest projects such as schools. Now, is a school a more modest uh, uh, project? I don't know. Anyway. This is uh, what we imagine he looked like. There were no photographs at the time, uh, but he was. He was a great architect, very much so. Uh, these are idealizations, uh, you know, uh, visualizations, uh, uh, you know, of the present time. Who knows how he looked like, but we know how his buildings look like, uh, and. Um, he deserves to be known because we think that architecture belongs only to a certain time and a certain continent or place. It's not so. The human genius exists everywhere. And uh, Buckminster Fuller was probably right when he said everybody is a genius, but life de geniuses people. In the dynamics of life, you know, um, that uh, great quality that exists in a human being at birth slowly diminishes or is diminished. And uh, in the end, only a few apparently deserve this strange word, which I don't know really if it should, should continue to be employed. Anyway, uh, I, think, I think Sinan, uh, Mimar Sinan deserves a lot of study, and I'm sure you know uh, there are important studies on him. But he is not so well known by uh, you know uh, architects from a different religion. A mosque in Istanbul. I hesitate to pronounce the, its name. Shehzade, Shehzade Mosque in Istanbul. Now, if this is not architecture, I don't know what architecture is. It is architecture. And I, I would almost say, uh, probably uh, you know, controversially, that it is modern architecture. Of course, it is not modern architecture, but good architecture has the two halves that Charles Baudelaire talked about, that he said that art has two halves. One belongs to the uh, ephemeral, the transitory, uh, and uh, the other speaks about uh, or circumstantial, and the other half speaks about the et eternal and the immutable. This building speaks about the time when Mimar Sinan lived and about the place where he lived, but also speaks about that, you know, permanent you know, uh, eternal quality of the other half of art. And in that sense, you know, it's a building that could be, could be called partially at least modern. Does it have force? It does. Does it have rhythm? It does. 
does it have um, emotion? I think it does. The, the masses, uh, the parts that compose the building provoke an emotional uh, reaction in the viewer. So why couldn't we call it, you know, to an extent, a modern building? I know this could be debatable, but uh, I think beauty has no age. And is the crystallization of uh, uh, clearly formulated variety in unity or multiplicity in unity. It is monolithical, it is strong, but you also notice the, the parts, the fragments that compose this monolith oneness. The interior of this mosque just the construction in itself was at that time immensely difficult, I imagine. And it was built. And it was built not just like a, you know, a structure in itself. Here we see the ornament uh, coming together with the, with the structure, enhancing each other. So uh, structure and ornament should come together, yes. The ornament should become structure, and structure should become ornament. They should be simultaneous. Like uh, yin and yang of architecture, structure and ornament, ornament and structure, yin and yang. How else are we to arrive at beauty? Is it music here? Is this building frozen music? Perhaps it is. How many craftsmen and artists, artisans, painters, sculptors contributed to this building? Suleymanian Mosque in Istanbul, another great work. Mimar Sinan. Who would say that this is not architecture? Who could say something like this? Is it modern? Yes, it is modern. <laughs> I keep saying it, although it is you know, almost five centuries old. For me, it's a modern building. Modern in the sense that it is continuously relevant. It doesn't become, it didn't become old. For me, the past, the truly relevant past is the one that doesn't pass. And no one could say that this past, that it's time past. No, no, it's still a towering uh, architectural achievement of the highest order. Mimar Sinan. Uh, contemplating these structures, you feel the need to the need for architecture and the need to do architecture. If you are born an architect, such images and such buildings encourage you, I think, to continue to move on that path of becoming an architect. Maybe we don't have today so much confidence in, in constructive gestures. B. 
did he work in this way? I mean, are those, uh, you know, geometrical interpretations, what he used to create the plans of this building? Maybe. Such studies were made also for um, Alberti. Um, but it is about the beauty of doing architecture, of making architecture, you know, where speculative uh, thoughts uh, are married with all kinds of uh, other interests, materials, uh, structure, uh, ornament. Uh, there is complexity here. The interior. Impressive. What else can we say? Very impressive. Mimar Sinan. Look at this ceiling. Built by thousand hands and without parametry. I mean, without our tools, digital tools, and the building was erected and it stands almost 500 years later. There is power here, yes. And there is the power of a faith that is expressed with the confidence of someone who has it. There is no doubting here. Another mosque in Adirn. Okay, maybe the minarets are a little bit um, too assertive, but Maybe from uh, the point of view of the religion that uh, required them and generated them, um, it's not so. Maybe Hermann Herzberger was right when he said that, uh, you know, the public is at the origin of architecture. Here we have the publicness of this building animating um, the whole thing. And, 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 but at the same time, it's not a, a public that is composed of uh, uh, um, uh, units or unities that are, I mean, I'm talking about um, individualities that are, uh, uh, you know, mechanically, not organically connected to e with each other. In other words, one plus one plus one is more than one plus one plus one. One plus one plus one is not just one plus one plus one. In an architecture where res publica and res privata come together convincingly, like, like we see it here. The great French Gothic cathedrals were built uh, a little earlier, but this architecture is um, not less noble. The interior of this mosque. Majestic. And the culmination, of course, is up there. And the magic of number eight. People coming together in the name of a faith they share. Another mosque in Trikala, Osman Shah Mosque, a smaller one. 
But he didn't build just mosques. We are going to see a little bit later other buildings. Uh, quite, uh, quite interesting. I don't know what to think about the columns here. They seem to be borrowed or uh, you know remade somehow. It's possible. Another one in Crimea. If it wasn't destroyed by the war. Possibly Mimar Sinan left at the tomb of Suleiman the Magnificent. This is a pictorial representation. So <laughs> this might have been, could have been, maybe, Mimar Sinan, the architect. Still uh, recognizable, you know, with his facial uh, identification and, uh, you know, uh, crafting the building, not in the, in the less... Uh, obvious um, you know, posture, like uh, Imhotep, the king of, uh, the, the, the architect of King Zoser, the, the first architect in history as we know it, Imhotep, whose name was um, deciphered under the sole of the foot of the pharaoh, pharaoh Zoser. So Imhotep, who was kind of a, the first Leonardo da Vinci, if we had to call him so, uh, was discovered and then he was uh, deified um, a few hundred years later. Uh, still, in relationship with the, with the authority, with the pharaoh, the king, King Zoser, his name was discovered under the soul, under the foot of the pharaoh, of the king. In this case, at least we see the architect, uh, if indeed is, is him, and it's possible he is. Uh, well, he is in the lower left corner, but he's still present in the picture. Mimar Sinan, another mosque built by Sinan in 1575, so 438 years ago in Adirne, Turkey. Now we know how a mosque by um, Mimar Sinan looks like. A detail. This is architect. I'm sorry. I have the highest admiration for Chartres Cathedral, but I also have the highest admiration for this building. It is architect. How else to call it? This is a bridge inscribed at UNESCO, built by Sinan in 1577 in Bosnia. Is this a modern bridge? <laughs> I would feel tempted to provoke you by saying yes, it is a modern bridge. When was it built? 1577. So 446 years ago. I call it a modern, a modern bridge in stone. Sinan, Mimar Sinan, Mi Sinan the architect. Uh, seen uh, in, in these conditions of light, uh, this, uh, this bridge looks almost like uh, that hospital that um, Louis Kahn built in Bangladesh. Uh, taking taking in, into consideration also the reflection in the water. Is this a modern bridge? Yes, it is. Sorry for being so... Uh, Inaccurate. 
Mimar Sinan's architectural concepts were incorporated into the design of the famous Taj Mahal in the Mughal Empire of Shah Jahan. So the influence of Mimar Sinan arrived all the way there in the Mughal Empire. And here it is, the Taj Mahal, the great mausoleum born from love and for love because it was built when uh, the wife of uh, Shah Yahan died. Another mosque in Sofia, Sofia, in Sofia, in, uh, in uh, when was it built? It doesn't say. Here it is, Mimar Sinan, in Bulgaria, in Sofia. So he built in Bosnia, in Bulgaria, in Crimea, in Turkey mainly. This is a very interesting work, Hagia Sophia Hurem Sultan Bathhouse. It's a bathhouse. It's not a religious building, but it's a great building. The Turkish bath, Hammam, constructed by architect Mimar Sinan with the order of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent for his wife, Haseki Hurem, Sultan known in the West as Roxelana or Roxelaine, Roxelaine, located in Istanbul, close to the Hagia Sophia, a bath. A great building, powerful, with variations, with uh, articulations of various parts, with rhythm. It's very, very nice. The, the, the dome of the ladies um, or the women's uh, bath is different, is this one compared to the one of the men. So the dome of the men's hot room, look at it. Is this modern? Yes, it is modern. Was it built 450 years ago or so? Yes, it was built then. So again and again, in art, chronology or chronos is uh, only to an extent to be considered. Mimar Sinan, Istanbul, the dome of the man's hot room. Why did he make it so? Did he contemplate encouraging contemplation in this space? Perhaps. Another mosque, stone, ornament, glass, and giant rugs. Frank Lloyd Wright admired immensely the Persian blue domes. Here we have blue rugs or a giant rug that is blue, but there are there is also bluish uh, ceramic work on the walls or on the sides of the building. Here they are. And I think it's time to bring back ceramics to architecture in our time now. They uh, and even textiles, yes. Textiles and ceramics, textiles and ceramics. An ornament.
Another mosque, he did build a lot of mosques. Imar Sinan. Look at this, it is splendid. It doesn't matter what religion you belong to. No one could say that this is not beautiful. It is. Is it modern? Yes, it is modern. Here we almost see the plan of a hospital designed by Bertrand Goldberg, who was born on the day when Mimar Sinan died, meaning the 17th of July, a different year and even a different century. But in art, there are no frontiers, neither in time nor in space. Kronos is accepted in the history of art, of course, but he's not the only god of time. There is also Kairos. Do we know who made these um, these artworks? We don't. We don't. Then we don't know their names. But 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 this doesn't matter actually. What matters is the the aspiration for the above. If it is an anonymous aspiration, all for the better. Just like at Chartres, do we know the the names of the builders of that formidable cathedral? We don't. Now we sign every little sketch that we make. I saw a giant wall at the Museum of Modern Art in New York some years ago with a, a little sketch by uh, Tadao Ando. And it was a giant wall. He drew it on the wall and he signed it twice on the lower left corner of the wall and the right lower corner of that very wall. Was it necessary? I don't think so. It was a, you know, an exhibition with his works. Everybody knew that was the work of Tandawando. Did it need two signatures? I doubt it. I don't think it needed even one. Anyway, Chartres Cathedral is not signed, but we sign everything these days. Even the most uh, unimportant little artistic, let's call it artistic gesture. We sign it. We sign it because we want to be authors. But these people didn't sign. They didn't have to. They were for the glory of God. And the ceramics, blue or not, are and can be beautiful. Let's bring them back to architecture. Let's bring back narration to architecture. Victor Hugo said that uh, Gutenberg, uh, the book killed the cathedral because after the arrival of uh, the mass produced uh, or published, uh, published books, after Gutenberg, um, you know, the narration left the walls of the cathedral and uh, entered the pages of the books. But now the book is under assault. You know, from the media, from the from the web, from the internet. So what will happen? Maybe, maybe the book wants to return to the wall. And I imagine here there are, I do not know, I cannot translate, but I imagine there is a narration of some sort, maybe an hymn to God. Maybe we can bring back some kind of a narration to our walls in some form. I think this form of uh, gestural uh, uh, architecture are very enticing. And the graphics are um, explosive. They have energy, even when they are uh, figurative, like in this case. Ceramic tiles, yes, they are beautiful. And I think 
in very creative and modern ways, we could do something to bring them back to architecture. Just as it happened in the past. After all, a ceramic tile is earth. So, we are told we are earth ourselves. So, if we are earth, there is some kind of a you know, family connection between us and ceramic tiles. They are earth, we are earth. Mimar Sinan. This is a cafe. <laughs> he designed even something like this. A cafeteria or a cafe. Look at it. It's not a mosque, but it's still architecture. I wouldn't mind at all having a glass of water there because I don't drink any longer coffee. I drank enough in my uh, youth, enough to kill a, a horse, not just a human being. Uh, what is this? Kali uh, Pasha complex. Uh, is a most complex designed and built between 1580 and 1587 by Bimar Sinan. We remember that he lived a very long life. He almost arrived at being 100 years old, who at the time was in his 90s. 90s! And this man was still creative. He was a phenomenon. The mosque itself was constructed in 1578 and 1580. And here it is. Is it the, the, the work of a young man? Yes, it is the work of a 90 years old young man. I paraphrase Le Corbusier, who in, a, in an interview, uh, he began, uh, well, a video that I watched on, on YouTube, uh, he began uh, his, uh, his uh, you know, his talk by saying, I am a 72 years old young man. Well, here is a 90 years old uh, or over 90 years old young man. Uh, named uh, Mimar Sinan. Bravo to him. He did earn his youth because uh, Le Corbusier said the problem in life is not to remain young, but to become young. And I remember the beautiful testimony of uh, Hokusai, the great Ukiyo-e Japanese artist who said at 50, that he was beginning to learn the ABC of his profession. He was already an accomplished artist, changing his name many times as uh, many Japanese uh, artists in the 19th century did. At 60, he said, I make a little bit of a progress. At 70, he said, I think I'm getting there. At 80, I'm, I'm, I'm even closer and so on. He, he, he lived over 80. But isn't it beautiful that you hear or read, well, you hear a great artist at 50 saying, I am learning the ABC of my profession when he was already accomplished. This is the usefulness. And this reminds me of what Picasso said that it took him four years to learn to paint like Raphael and a lifetime to learn to paint like a child. Maybe we should all attempt to become children. The Pali Pasha chronogram, and look at this. Is this beauty? Yes, it is beauty. Is it modern? Yes, it is modern. And it makes me think a little bit of Hans Hartung with his abstractions, graphic abstractions. What do we have to attempt, at least attempt to transgress death? Not much. But art, we do have. That's why we need art badly. It's an illusion, you could say, but we need this illusion. Another mosque, the endless list of mosques. Uh, uh, mosques. 
the Haseki Sultan complex, another brilliant architecture. Simple, austere, solid. There is variety, there is multiplicity, there is unity. Stone. Imar Sinan, over the centuries, he salutes us. Then we salute him back on the day when he died, the 17th of July. A builder, a great builder. So this mosque is a 16th century Ottoman mosque located in the Edirne neighborhood near the Byzantine land walls of Istanbul in Turkey. It was commissioned by Mikhmach uh, Sultan, the daughter of Suleiman the Magnificent, and designed by the chief imperial architect Mimar Sinan, sited on the peak of the sixth hill near the highest point of the city. The mosque is a preeminent landmark in Istanbul. And here it is, triumphantly claiming that architecture does exist and does deserve to exist. It was uh, affected by uh, some events, some natural, some historical or man-made, man but the spirit of the building persists and uh, the building was repaired and its nobility is for all to see. Mimar Sinan. Sinan's octagonal water dispenser on the left, next to his tomb behind the iron grill on the right, Fatih district of Istanbul. So he was buried here and there is a water dispenser, you know, like a, like a fountain, octagonal. Leonardo da Vinci loved the octagon and now we see Sinan loving the octagon. And here it is. This is the so-called water dispenser, a fountain, octagonal in plan. And this is where Mimar Sinan was buried in Istanbul. Does this move us? I think it should, yes. Thank you.